Canadians made a trade. It may not be the player you thought they were going to trade. Out of all the players, is he the one they should have traded? And how's this prospect they got in return? And two guys from Quebec are in their prospect pool, and you didn't get either of them? Was this a bad move, a good move, an average move? We discuss coming up, the Sick Podcast. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Tony Maradero. The Sickest Montreal Canadiens Podcast. And now a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadiens win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. All right, so credit to uh, Elliot Friedman, who's one of the best. I like Elliot very, very much. He's the one who had tipped us off that the Calgary Flames were very interested in Tyler Toffoli and trade talks were heating up, followed up by Darren Dreger and Pierre Lebrun and all the best who do it. Anyway, the deal is done. Tyler Toffoli is now a Calgary Flame. He goes to Calgary. In return, the Canadians get a first-round pick, which is top 10 protected, by the way, a fifth-round pick, Tyler Pitlick, so the finances make sense, and prospect Emil Heineman. Was this a good deal for Calgary, Montreal, both? Could the Canadians have done better? Joining me right now from Global TV Montreal, Brian Wild. Good afternoon. Hi there. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm very well today. Thank you for joining me. It's a sick podcast brought to you by 8.6 beer, of course, intense by nature, the beer for those who follow their instinct and live their passions in order to make their mark. Brian, I'll start off with this. Out of all the players you thought the Canadians were going to trade, was Tyler Toffoli on that list? And if so, where was he? Uh, probably around <laughs> seventh, somewhere in that area. I mean, they're all going to get traded eventually. And I think it's just a case of who got a good offer at what time, not whether they have to go in a sequential order. They just have to get done. So the Toffoli is this early. I'm okay with that. That is Toffoli at all. I'm not sure. I thought he was a guarantee to be traded. 29 years of age, two and a half years left of term. Pretty good contract, great in the room, loves Montreal. Um, so from a personal nature, he's a guy I really liked. Uh, that article that he wrote uh, for the NHL was fantastic. fantastic. How much he and Cat, how much he and Cat embraced the uh, province and the city on uh, the language and everything. Um, you know, it's a shame it had to come to this on those terms, right? Because personally, he's a guy everybody loved. His dog too, <laughs> you know, his teapot. I mean, he's yeah. just so much to love with the guy. But, I mean, this is the nature of hockey. When you need to rebuild, it's a business. And there are tough days like today in terms of how you feel about someone as a human being uh, versus uh, a financial asset. And and that's the part of it that hurts, Brian, because we know that there are a couple of players who don't want to be here. And Tyler yeah. Toffoli is not one of them. Yeah. We know that there are some family members of some of the players who don't want to be here. <laughs> And Kat Toffoli is not one of them. She very much wanted to be here. Their dog wanted to be here, too, like you just said. <laughs> they, You're they, the dog whisperer, Tony? <laughs> so Tyler Toffoli <clears throat> chose to come to Montreal as an unrestricted free agent. He could have got more money, and Mark Bergevin told us that. He really wanted to play with Nick Suzuki. He had a great playoff last year, and they went to the Stanley Cup final. He had a great regular season as well. He's a good player. He wants to be here. His wife wants to be here. And I thought that he showed incredible leadership. And I thought that in the short term for the remaining years on his contract, if he was going to be here, he could have been a guy who could have been considered to be captain or assistant captain. Obviously, it's not the case. Uh, they part ways with him. But this one is tough. It's, it's mm -hmm. hard to part ways with someone who was really so happy to be a Montreal Canadian live in Montreal, and embrace the province of Quebec. It's tough. Yeah, because you know what? Not all do. Um, I don't want to say it takes a special type of person, but um, there is a type of person that 
uh, doesn't always, and I, I'm not going to name a name here. I'm just going to say it, you know, anonymously. But I anonymously had a conversation with someone in the NHL ranks who said to me something to the effect of, like, don't you find that you get afraid here? And I'm like, what? <laughs> afraid? Like, afraid of what? And he said, well, you know, like the language and everything. Don't you feel like you're, you know, lost sometimes here? And, you know, and so I was like, no, no, I, I, I love it here. I brace it here. And Tyler Toffoli was like that. But it just shows that not all players are like that, you know? Not all players feel that way about coming into a new language in a new city where they look at a street sign and go, oh, God, I don't even, I, I'm lost. I don't even, you know what I mean? Things that, you know, we're cool with and we find exciting and uh, cultural and, you know, Cat and Tyler were like that. And their dog, apparently, um, you're certain of. So, but not all people are. So uh, yeah. when they are, when they are, Tony, it's it's tough to let them go when they love it here. Yeah, they become family. You know what I mean? And that doesn't sound very reporterish and journalistic of me. Yeah. but um, I love it here too. You know, and I don't understand why anybody doesn't love it in Montreal. I think it's the greatest goddamn place in the world. So you know, when when Cat and Tyler and the dog are just feeling at home here, I mean, it's hard not to embrace them. You know, yeah. as something not a hockey <laughs> reporter. Listen, I know everyone's different, like you just said, but um, I speak English. Some would say not very good, but I do. Uh, I speak French. Some would say not very good, but I do. Uh, yeah, I yeah. do speak very good Italian. I'll tell you that. And I also speak Spanish, Spanish. and I also speak Portuguese. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you this. I think learning a new language and learning about a, 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 um, a new culture or a different culture the are two of the most beautiful things in the world. And I don't 100%. understand anyone who would want to deprive themselves of that Me luxury. Either. But hey. Okay, so the deal is done, and Tyler Toffoli goes to Calgary for a first-round pick, a fifth-round pick. Tyler Pitlick, who, by the way, the only reason why he's thrown in the deal was because Calgary only had just over $1.5 million of cap space, so there has to be some money coming back the other way for the Canadians not to retain salary and for the deal to actually happen. And prospect Emil Heineman. Now, clearly... The guts of this trade is the first round pick and prospect Emil Heineman. Brian, when you heard that the deal was about to go down and there was yeah. a prospect included, yeah. who were you thinking of? Well, I wanted Coronado firstly, because, you know, he's the USHL player of the year last year, played with Sean Farrell. Hell of a player, great skater, small though, you know, and maybe they've got a small footprint already, a winger. So maybe they got a winger, small footprint already in Cole Caulfield. Uh, so he wasn't the perfect prospect, but in terms of um, the people say that his work rate is just off the chart. So Coronado probably, you know, Peltier too, if they were going to try to maybe get somebody from Quebec. And, uh, but I mean, I was just looking at the list and, you know, I can't say that I knew their prospects like right off the bat i had to look at the uh, athletics list and and see who was there uh and i knew coronado best from playing with farrell and in, in the ushl uh but um you know peltier being a, you know somebody from quebec obviously kind of seemed like a name maybe too if they want to increase that footprint but yeah, Heineman wasn't even on my radar. I'm told he's good. You know, I've talked to some people yeah. since he got picked up. And um, apparently in that draft year, the Canadians had him really high. Uh, he's, apparently he's got a real nice shot. Average to good skater. Nose for the net. I mean, we'll see, right? I mean, he was a second rounder. A second rounder's always got a chance. Second rounder makes the league 15 to 30% of the time, depending where in that second round you're taken. So he's got a chance to make the NHL. Um, bottom six, probably not going to, you know, dramatically change the world or anything. Um, that first, you know, that's 20th overall, 21, 22, yeah. probably. And that's a 50, 50 prop. I mean, ask Trevor Timmons how hard it is to land at 25. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a 50, 50 deal. Brian, at the end of the day, look, if it's, um, you know, if, if Pitlick doesn't what did have, you think? let me get your thoughts. Can yeah. I well, thoughts? I, I think this, the second that I heard there was a prospect involved mm -hmm. with Calgary, I immediately thought of winger Jacob Peltier from the province of Quebec or puck moving defenseman Emil Poirier from the province of Quebec, who's playing for the St. John Sea Dogs, who's a point a per force. game player, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a left-handed defenseman. And I think he's 19 years old. He's been four years in the queue. 
Very Those offensive. Those two prospects are top five from the Flames, and I think that if you don't land a player from Quebec when they have two of them in the top five prospect pool, yeah, it's hard to explain. I think that's unfortunate. Now, having said that, others will say, well, it just goes to show the Canadians mean business, but I think they had an opportunity. Look, I I would have loved to have seen Poirier. So at one point, um, you know, I, I'm not going to spit at a first and Heinemann. And clearly, look, I would have to think that Jeff Gordon had intel on this player and really liked them or that's one of their what, European scouts. I mean, yeah, that's what LeBron said, that the Canadians really wanted that player. So but I agree with you on the on the defenseman and especially being that he's an offensive defenseman. Um, if you wanted to send a message that uh, the Savards and the Alsners weren't going to be the uh, the package you were looking for, it would have certainly been that kid, right? Because I mean, he's all yeah. offense. I would love to see that. I would love to see that when it's all done, we get to learn finally that they want to bring in some puck moving defensemen in here, and Poirier would have been the first chance to show that that was you know their their new attack plan. And they and they didn't come through with it. But with that said, I mean, it's not like I was in the conference room yeah. and how and how they feel, you know, traveling, uh, tra- traveling feels about him. So I mean, it's 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 hard to be judgmental. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he's a good player. He's scoring well in the Swedish Elite League. That's not an easy league to score goals in. Uh, second rounder, um, you know. It's funny. Well, it, we won't know for four years, five years, yeah. right? Like even yeah. the first, even the first rounder was probably going to be twenty second overall somewhere in there. That might not land. Well, uh, it might we'll not to, land anything yeah. for Toffoli. It's not. It's never fit a complete. We'll get to a scouting report in just a second on Emil Heineman, but Tyler Toffoli is now a Calgary Flame, and if you want to buy a Calgary Flames jersey with Tyler Toffoli's name in the back of it. You can go to sportbuffshop.com for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and our sick merchandise. I'm wearing Embrace the Tank today, very appropriately so, I would think. Uh, Use code 615 for 15% off on all of their items. One of the things we didn't talk about with the Foley, of course, is not only is he on a very friendly contract at a very friendly amount, he gets reunited with Daryl Sutter, who was coaching the Los Angeles Kings when he won a cup there. Yeah, and I got to add, too, because we haven't really, you know, from a Calgary perspective, I think from a Calgary perspective, this is, you know, this is outstanding. They're playing great hockey. Yeah. Uh, They got a chance to make a run at it, and they just added a guy that is playoff great. You know, he always shows up in the big games, and they just added a winger that can, you know, make a difference for them. Um, So from their point of view, I'm really of the mind that if you've got a team that's firing on all cylinders, that's never a guarantee that that's going to continue year after year after year, whether the chemistry is right or the players stay healthy. They're in a really good place right now, and they added a great player. I hate to say it because, you know, I'm from Edmonton, and Mm. naturally I have a a natural disposition to hate all things Calgary. My Uh, God. But but they're looking good. (laughs) They're looking real good. Uh, In an article in the Calgary Sun back on the 4th of January, so about six weeks ago, Ray Edwards, who's the Flames development coach, was asked about Emil Heineman, and he said he has an engine. He works. He's on the puck. He works 200 feet. He's always moving his feet. He's a high energy player. He's not afraid of physicality. He'll attack the net. He's really good on the forecheck. He'll hunt. He'll hunt down pucks to me. It's the most impressive thing about him. It's a young player that isn't afraid to compete against men. He's not afraid to go into tough areas, not afraid to attack. He's a very direct player. He wins battles. It's that competitiveness, that energy, that willingness to win races, to be first on the puck, to drive D wide. He does all that stuff, and he does it as a young player against way older players. When I read this, the first thing I thought about was when you rebuild, you want to try and you want to try and compete night in, night out. That's why they made the coaching change to go to Marty St. Louis because, as you have put it, uh, uh, and and others have put it as well, you want to kind of lose without saying it, but compete, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Entertain, he's, compete. He's a player that will allow you to compete, right? Because he's going to he's going to compete. He's going to work hard. He's going to chase down pucks, and so I I thought that was interesting. But in no nowhere in that scouting report is. This guy can be a big-time goal scorer. Right. And so you read that, 
I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie to you. If, if it works <laughs> out, I tip my hat. But clearly, I think the Canadians see something in this player, or Gordon does, or one of their scouts, that most others don't. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And did I hear it right? I didn't hear anything about great skater either. Uh, no, high energy chases down pucks, but we didn't hear a great skater. Yeah, and I, I feel like right now in today's NHL, if you don't, if that scouting report doesn't have great skater in it, I'm automatically nervous. You know, yeah. it just there are very few people that can, you know, be average skaters and make this league. It's a, it's yeah. a skating league, man. It's fast. <laughs> it's fast, man. It's getting faster. It's getting faster and so on faster. That note, yes. When Kent Hughes had his introductory press conference, uh, named general manager of the Canadians, and talked about how he wants to play, and he said he wants to play an attack game, and he wants to skate fast, play fast. Mm -hmm. Did you immediately think that's not the Foley? He could be in trouble here. Yeah, but he plays fast, right? Yeah, Toffoli doesn't. Toffoli doesn't skate fast, but he plays fast. Yeah, he, he plays does. fast. He he makes quick decisions. He's yeah, quick he's, here. Yeah, absolutely. He's got a great brain. Yeah, for the game. Yeah, he's 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 there before you know the puck's going there. I mean, uh, that that's why he's found great success with his skating ability. And yeah, then you know, there's there, there's always players outside of the expected footprint of needing to be a great skater if you make fast decisions and you know predict the puck's movement. Uh, you can always circumvent that difficulty. But not a lot of people can do that. No, and he doesn't skate fast. And I got to tell you, I don't run fast, but I'll talk to you about my matrixhomefitness.ca because <laughs> I'm able to walk fast. And they got a great, uh, great program, which is called Sprint 8, and it's got a program for beginners like me. You can bring it home, discover a club-quality workout in the comfort of your own home. Visit matrixhomefitness.ca. Brian, you and I spoke, I, I don't remember when, I'll, I'll guess probably, give or take, about two weeks ago. Yeah. And and you said that there was, in your opinion, probably up to 10 players could yeah. be dealt here. All right. This is the first move, mind you. They acquired a goalie on the weekend. Andrew Hammond was acquired for Brian Baddock. But in terms of uh, that was, as we all know, so that Caden Primo could be sent down to Laval to regain his confidence. So Toffoli is the first player dealt mm -hmm. in the rebuild. Who will be the second? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna like circumvent your question there a little bit because uh, you know what hit me when he was number one is like when you and I did talk two weeks ago about how many there would be and we kind of went through that list and got to ten. Doesn't the fact that Toffoli's been dealt tell you that when we guessed what the number was going to be and we got as high as ten? Doesn't the fact that Toffoli being dealt tell us that we were right that we're going to be at around ten? Like you're not at around four or three players are going to be dealt and Toffoli is one of the three. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, right? This, this, this move to me says this is uh, going to be a long rebuild because he had two and a half years left on his contract. So that means. Oh, it's a rebuild for sure. I, this is this, a rebuild like, for we're sure. looking for little hints all the time. How serious are these guys? Correct. Because right? you and I are both of the same mindset. Like yeah. your shirt saying it, and I'm feeling the same thing. Let's not like do one of those ones here where, you know, next year we want to win the cup again. Like, like we're getting an idea here when a guy's two and a half years left of term at 29, that this management group, you know, Gordon and Hughes, they're thinking three years on this. Oh yeah. Brian. Brian, this, let me add, five please. Years. let Go me ahead. add to Foley could have helped them win some hockey games next year. They don't want to win too many hockey games next year. Well said. That's They're the never going to tell you that. But if you didn't figure that out by them trading Tyler Toffoli, who was not one of the first six guys that anyone thought they would have traded, that tells you everything you need to know. So for those who are saying next year is going to be so much better, I say give me Connor Bedard or give me Mitch Koff and, and I'll be happy. Tony, and so will they. Tony, that's the magic sentence that you just said. That, I mean, that's the magic sentence. That's the one that lets everyone understand completely what they're doing. All right. Okay. So now on that note, have you seen improvement in terms of losing competitively uh, improvement in Cole Caulfield? Have you seen some improvement under Marty St. Louis? And are you excited? Because I've given him the benefit of the doubt 
I think they had absolutely nothing to lose by hiring him with 37 games left in the season. It's an audition for him. If things don't get better, they weren't on pace of or on track of getting better anyway. I haven't heard your thoughts on this, so I'm curious. Were you encouraged by the move? Were you in favor of it? And have you seen any changes? I thought it was a great move. I mean, listen, if they were fighting for a playoff spot or thought they could win the Stanley Cup or something like that, it's a massive gamble. Like, what if he's terrible and you were on the cusp of something good and he completely messed it up? But when you're already at the very bottom and you really can't go any lower, when is the time to make a giant experiment on a human being? That's when. That's when. Perfect time. Absolutely. You've got the the downside is next to none. You know, it's it, uh, uh, you can almost uh, put it against the philosophy in the draft of a second rounder. Like when you make your second rounder, what should the attitude be? You can get a bottom six forward? No, I say no. Shoot for the moon. Shoot for the guy with a ton of upside who could fail completely. Because the guy that you get in that round, generally speaking, he's, he's not going to change your fortunes to greatness anyway. So shoot for the moon and see if Kucherov comes. Brian, you know what I mean? It's the same with St. Louis as a coach yeah. choice. History. Shoot for the moon. What if he's great? What if he's Rod Brindamore? He's yeah. got no downside. Shoot for the moon. Yeah. So and, I love and, his and, attitude. And maybe yeah. he makes all the difference in the world. I think he's already making a difference to Cole Caulfield. Many will say that, well, uh, Brian, you brought up Rod Brindamore. He had previous experience as an assistant head coach. Yep. It doesn't matter. I say this. Marty St. Louis wants a chance. History has shown me. I'm going to give it to him. Sure. He's overachieved his entire life. And you know what? Entire he, life. You, he did you're it before not going to go any again. farther. You're not going to go any farther than Vermont. You're 5'8". You didn't get drafted. You're going to finish your career in Vermont. You better take uh, your schooling with a lot of concentration and get your degree because it's that's what you're going to be living on for the rest of your life. And he said, nah, F that. I'm Martin St. Louis, and I'm going to overachieve my entire life. So let him see if he can overachieve as a head coach. So far, I love his messages. I love his messages. Yeah. And they want to be an offensive team? Oh, my God, bring it on. When, when's the last time the team had a 40-goal score? When's the last time they had a 100-point guy? I mean, bring it on. We've been watching Bob Ganey hockey and, and, and Mark Bergevin. I mean, we've been watching it forever. Can't we get a break? Can't we watch some fun hockey for? Yeah. Oh, I was about to swear. Ah, <laughs> for God's sake, can't we get some fun hockey for a change, Tony? And can't that, we? and you hit the nail on the head, Brian. Because don't forget, in all this, they need to sell tickets between now and the end of the year, and they need to sell them next year too. And they're going to be losing this year, and they're going to be losing next year. And you know how the how you lose? You lose competitively, like you said, and you lose. By seeing some good plays, by seeing some nice goals, you lose 5-3, you lose 6-4. Absolutely. You, and you raise your players' confidence because the more confidence they have, the better they're going to play, the more their value is going to go up, and the more it's going to be a place where people are going to want to come here. And nobody wants to see Paquette with 17 minutes. Nobody. Nobody. Um, I don't want to see Paquette with seven nobody. minutes anymore. Nobody I, wants it, right? No. You know, like even if Cole struggles, even if Ryan Paling struggles a little bit, even if Romanov looks overmatched a little bit, fans are going to be way happier to see that. You're going to be way happier. Like what's the happiest moment in the last three months for fans? It's probably Cole Caulfield scoring the other day. Just in their minds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm going to win, but, uh, you know, uh, probably they were happier in that loss. He scores once. He had another beautiful goal call back on a on an offside. Nobody knew yeah. it was an offside. That's more exciting to them than you know. Even if the Canadians won three to two, and and you know a thirty three year old scored and a thirty seven year old scored. You're right. You know what I mean. So I mean that's what it's all about. Now entertain. Let the young kids play. Let me feel good about the future, and I'll put up with this for three to five years. Brian, hopefully people are entertained when they watch you and I and they have as much fun watching this as you and I have doing it. And I'll remind everyone that they can go to Facebook, they can go to Instagram, and they can go to Twitter, and they can follow us at The Sick Podcast, and they can go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. It's absolutely free. It is The Sick Podcast. Brian Wild, always good chatting with you, but I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for asking me. And there you have it, the first of many trades by Montreal Canadiens General Manager Kent Hughes, the first of many in terms of The rebuild, of course. Folks, it's going to hurt. But good things come to those who wait. So be patient. Be patient. Embrace the tank. 
and it's going to be worth it one day. I'm going to put my name on that. The rebuild is marinara approved, and so is the sick podcast, and so is 8.6. See everyone. Ciao for now. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by 8.6, intense by nature.